Let's learn how the get element by ID works in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and create a brand new file. And we're going to save that file. And I'll call it DOM sample1.html. And then I'll go ahead and put in the basics of the HTML with our HTML tag and the head tag and the body tag. And now that we have that, let's go down to the body and let's go ahead and put an input and we'll say type is equal to button and let's give it a text of click me and let's give it an ID of my button and let's give it a click event that if we ever click on it we want to go to um, a function called click me parenthesis parenthesis so there's our button the other thing I want to do on here is I want to add a p tag and I want to give it an ID and I'll go ahead and call it output I could call it anything I want and that's just going to be another p tag and in fact let's go ahead and do um, let's go ahead and do another p tag and let's say that one is output 2 and that one is output 1 so we have two p tags and a button what we want to do is we want to show that when we click on this button we can go to the function click me and we can dynamically change the contents of this p tag and we can change the contents of that p tag so let's come up to our head section and we'll put in a script tag and let's write a function called click me and what we want to now do is access this tag somehow well, the way HTML works is that when you create an HTML document, this is turned into an object. It's called the DOM, the Document Object Model. And it goes through and it says, okay, we have an HTML object. Within the HTML, we have a head section and a body section, and those are objects. Within the head section, we might have a title or something else. Within the body section, we have a button object and a paragraph object and another paragraph object. And since these objects have IDs, I can dynamically access those objects and change their values as my website is running. Now remember, an ID says they has to be unique. It's like a unique name for that object. And so um, let's see how we could change that. Over here, we could say document dot get element by ID. You specify the ID, so we'll say output one. And then, since that's a p tag, we know that we can work with an attribute called inner HTML. And let's go ahead and we'll assign it I am the first paragraph. And then let's repeat that and we'll say let's go access two and we'll say I am the second paragraph now let's come back down to here and let's let's put in a couple of breaks just so we can clean it up a little bit so now when we run this if we click on this button it will go to the function click me which in turn will come up here and say go to the DOM go find an HTML tag or an object with the ID called output one which is right here and change its inner HTML and do the same thing for one called output2 and change its inner HTML. Let's run that and see what happens. So I click on it, there's the first p tag, there's the second p tag. And I did that by dynamically accessing those values through a JavaScript function. Another thing we could do, since we're building um, dynamic text here, we could just put the word, well, let's do this strong and we'll turn off strong and right here 
Let's do italic. We could put an I there for italicized, and oh, we'll just do it right here. And all I'm doing is I'm embedding HTML tags inside of this string, and then we're assigning that to something called inner HTML. Let's see if that makes a difference and if it really does any type of formatting. There's that bolded and there's that second. In fact, if I take a look at the code that gets generated for that, I should have just done a right mouse click and view page source. You can see there's the code that we're doing and ignore all of this because that gets injected by something called live server and so we are dynamically changing how that looks because we're accessing the object through the DOM finding the element that has the ID of output 1 changing its inner HTML doing the same thing for 2 so that get element by ID allows you to go find something in the DOM so let's see what else we can do then. If I came to this p tag and I gave it a name of, I'll just call it p tag, and give another name equals p tag. And so they have different IDs, but they have the same name. Now what I could do, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Let's create a variable called a list is equal to and let's get the document get element by name and let's grab all the p tags and this should create an array of all the objects that have the name of p tag so then I could do something like this for I count equals zero as long as I count is less than the array length I count plus plus and access the array bracket I count dot inner HTML is equal to P tag plus I count. So if we run this and we click on this, it should go out, create an array of all the elements you can find with the name P tag. There's the name. And then it says, well, now let's process that array and access array position 0, which should be output 1 p tag, and change its HTML to be p tag 0. And then it does it again and says p tag 1. Let's see if that actually works. And that shows that you can dynamically access elements in the DOM based upon a name using get elements by name rather than get element by ID. Another thing we could do is just use the type of tag it is. So let's add another P tag and I'm not going to give it an ID or a name. Over here instead of saying get element by name we're going to say get element by get element by tag name get elements whoops get elements by tag name now let's see if that is going to work because we still have to come here and say let's go find all the p tags and it returns an array and then we process each of those array elements and change their inner html so even though this one doesn't have an id or a name we might still be able to get to it. So let's run that and see if we can access it. If so, we should be able to see three p tags. There's zero, one, and two. So the get elements by tag name allows you to specify an HTML tag and you can grab all of those elements and change them.